One of the smallest members on the UNI men's basketball team is making huge contributions for the Panthers this season. Senior guard Anthony James is near the top of most statistical categories and is averaging double figures each time he steps on the court. Throwing a new wrinkle into the UNI offense this year, AJ has taken on the point guard responsibilities and shined in this new role. Going hard in the weight room, working on my ball handling, and, you know, pretty much just trying to stay consistent, you know, still working on my pull up and working on my three point shooting, and also, of course, defense, of course, but uh, that's pretty much what I've been doing in the offseason. Seen a lot of growth with him uh, in terms of his playing. Uh, he, he's really improved with his, his ball handling and his decision making and creating offense for his teammates. Known across the valley as a scoring threat, Anthony James can beat a defender off the dribble and get to the rim in the blink of an eye. He can score from almost anywhere on the court. He's been working really hard on getting to the bucket and stopping in his mid-range game has always been very tough. He's, he's very aggressive. He always stays aggressive in practice. He's, he's always giving it his 100%. Even if he's tired, you can tell he's always going to fight through it and he's always going to help motivate his team. If the game is on the line, AJ wants the basketball in his hands. There's no situation that scares him and he's always ready to fire away. He's just fearless out there. He just, you know, the ball's his and he, he thinks, you know, every, every shot he, he puts up is going in. Consistent attitude, consistent effort. Um, he's not going to have highs and lows. You know he's going to bring it every day. Uh, doesn't mean he's going to make every shot. He knows that. He's not going to react in those situations. He's just going to tee it up and, and take another crack at it. Anthony James is making the most of his time at UNI. Having already received his degree and emerging as a leader on the basketball team, James scored his 1,000th career point and is now a member of a very special group of UNI student athletes. For ESPN3, I'm Brad Wells. This is Anthony James of the Northern Iowa Panthers. Now the on-ball screen. James takes it himself. When was the last time you saw an offensive rebound and a stick back from Wichita State? They live and die with that opportunity. James feeling it. He's in double digits. One and done. A 15-2 run over the last five minutes. And James again. wants to call off the troops, and Anthony James has gone on an individual 6-0 run for the Panthers. Senior leadership when you're in close games, and Anthony James is providing that senior leadership. How important was the senior leadership of Anthony James coming down the stretch? That uh, was great, and I, I'd say midway through that second half. You know, he got rolling and knocked in, and knocked in some shots for us, and um, he's, uh, he's worked hard to get himself in position to, to be a leader for our basketball team, and, and uh, he did a great job with that today. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Three points tonight. Straight on. Ripples the nylon.
Anthony James highlights with the Northern Iowa Panthers. Graduation, and they tell us Chapman's done an exceptional job of filling that hole. There's a nice rebound there by Anthony James, the senior from St. Louis. A lot faster than you and I. And many other guards. And there's a lob pass. Good feed by... Hook inside. Gets the bucket and the foul. And he'll go for the three-point play. Anthony James, a nice lob pass because he saw that the weak side defender was not looking. There's a lob over the top. Good post up by Cook. And Shnike late. Gets the foul. Chapman and Mitchell. Chapman hit a three in that last trip. And McDermott, kind of a bad angle there. And now bodies flying all over the floor. Well, Jake Cook has done an excellent job now on McDermott. There's not been any help. There's kind of some fake doubles, but basically it's been one-on-one -on -one with McDermott trying to score over Jake Cook, and Cook has held his own. There's that ball screen that drags two defenders off. Now, Tuttle can make some threes. Hasn't hit very many, but he hits enough that keeps you honest. James with seven on the shot clock. And that's exactly what Northern Iowa also needs to do here in Omaha. Hit the threes like they did on Saturday. First in the conference and threes made heading into tonight's contest. What a weapon James. off the bench. James off that down pick. There's another guy with a quick trigger. Jays could tie it on this possession. Chapman tried to dish it to McDermott, but James was there for the steal. A good heads up play by James to keep playing through the possession. Look at this possession. You have four purple jerseys on the perimeter, only one inside, and there it goes to Cook with 15 on the shot clock. On McDermott. Jake Cook already with seven tonight. Rogge with some help in the steal. Here come the Jays. Sonnen with a nice weak side rebound. One and done on that possession for the Jays. James weaving through traffic and gets the deuce. He just sliced through that defense like butter in a hot knife. Again, Sonnen real quiet. Yeah, only one Good field goal attempt to, at, to this point. James driving on Managa with seven on the shot clock. Well, Managot is the Jays' best defender. James has been able to score. He's been able to get some angles off some ball screens. Many across the country, many scribes, many national recognized scribes will say that Doug McDermott right now is the player of the year in the entire country. And right now, his Blue Jays are up 35-28 as we near the one-minute mark left here in the opening half of play of the MVC on ESPN3. James pulls up from 15, and he drains it. And A.J. has 13 here in the first half. Johnson, the freshman from Texas, in and out. Rank with the rebound. Now time, down to two. James with one second, pulls up, hits it at the buzzer. And Northern Iowa gets a little momentum going to the locker room at the half, trailing 37 to 32 here after 20 minutes of play from Omaha. Managa, just short. And after a cool start to the non-conference season, Giants. He has uh, opened things up from beyond three in the conference season, going 13 of 19, and Anthony James picking up right where he left off here in the second half. Well, James has the hot hand. Woo. Quick hitters, transition points. Yeah, Northern Iowa's got to get transition defense. Got to get back on defense as quickly as possible, or you don't get that second chance points. There's Tuttle with the three. At least you and I saw, Kevin. It looked more inadvertent as... Chapman was on the drive trying to keep his balance. Cook on McDermott inside. Gibbs was running out of time. He's trying to get somebody to cut. Nobody at home. No one read it. Northern Iowa. Here's James right to the hole. Anthony James is putting on a show on the road here tonight. 
Egoff in and out. Tuttle with the rebound. Well, Egoff will continue to look for that three ball. He has improved dramatically. A floater up and in by Anthony James. They get him going in the scoring book, and it'll be a tough day. Anthony James is, can really turn a corner. He's a very quick release for the senior out of St. Louis. Now, this would be a very important game for Northern Iowa to handle the ball well because of the ability of Sim Edward and Walt Lemons Jr. to steal and turn those steals into instant points. That one doesn't draw iron, and James has it on the miss by Pickett. That one is good. Basket goes for Jalen Crawford. And Crawford has been given the Braves a huge lift off the bench, and that was a much-needed drink of water after a long dry spell by the Braves. Big three from Crawford. Ohana with the bounce pass into Tuttle, leaving James open for three. Well, we talked about Tuttle's ability to pass. A little inside, outside action by the Panthers as Seth Tuttle, the second assist of the afternoon. This is Northern Iowa's kind of game. And Walt Lemon was seven. A little pressure here. Try to take the Panthers out of their half-court rhythm and tempo. James scores over Prosser. Well, Jake Cook at six foot nine is difficult to press the Panthers because Cook is an excellent passer for a four-man, and it lets your score there. Anthony James be able to score at the end of the press. And Enriquez Sims Edwards, and he just overpowered Anthony James on that last move. James slips away, Cook for three, that goes. And the Panthers have taken some quick shots here to start the half and some off balance shots as Ben Jason is gonna to go to his bench here in the next dead ball situation. There's a steal, back the other way, Lemon Jr. And James can't make. It's an 11 point lead for Northern Iowa as Bradley tries to cut into it and cannot. Well, the pace was picking up and now Dion Mitchell elects to slow it down again. Including three of four from the three point line. He has 19, he scored 26, a career high in a game last year against Northern Iowa as Jake Cook hits a three and stretches the lead to eight. And this Carver crowd is on their feet. One in a defensive stop by the Braves. Sonnen, can he quiet them? Yes. Big three from Mark Sonnen. Huge, that play set up by Anthony James. A good, again, great patience by Northern Iowa. Rich Savosa, I'm John Rooney. Missouri Valley Conference Basketball. Northern Iowa in white, the Creighton Blue Jays, the number 13 team in the country in blue. And here's James. Straight up with the shot, his second field goal today. He has four points. Here's Young, and he was altered by Jake Cook's presence. Good that job. shot. Good job by Cook, forcing him to his right. James hits a long three. He has seven. He's beginning to feel it. All the way through the lane, circling back to the free throw line. Jones, high arc and short. They cook for Northern Iowa. James, getting a little more attention now from Jones. Looks open and right back to Anthony. Picks set by Tuttle. Short this time for James. Allowing the least amount of points. I'd say right now, Ben Jacobs' team has done the job on the defensive end. Along 60.8 points a game. And now on offense, one hand shot all bottoms. James has nine, seven in the second half. 55-52 Panthers. Back to a one point game. 
It's on and outside for James. Creighton switches to his zone defense. From the baseline, counted. Armstead misses the jumper. Here comes Northern Iowa. The floater by James, his first two. He's eighth in the conference in points a game. One minute eight. left, 23-22. Who does that favor? Well, I think the pace of this game is definitely where Northern Iowa wants to be. Now, Wichita State can also grind it out because they're so good defensively. But I think Northern Iowa is right where they want to be right now. James. Blocked. Are they going to count the bucket? Well, they're going to get a foul before the shot. Five in the country, but number one in the Big East with a 6-1 and one Big East record right now, led by Vander Blue. I love that name. Love that team. No word on if the Marquette bat is traveling from the Bradley Center <laughs> to the Yum Center to follow that team. I actually had that happen to me one time in a game, and I would go in the arena. We didn't start the game until the bat was gone. That's, that's what a big chicken I am. If you missed that story, <laughs> there was a bat in the Bradley Center when Marquette was hosting a couple of Big East games. Even got its own Twitter account. Yeah, my neighborhood, that's a flying rat. <laughs> I don't deal with them. Williams feeling it. Off the mark on the jumper. One and done. Good block off again for the white jerseys. Slow start to the second half, just like the first half for the Panthers. Point shooter premium. It's almost like the only way you're going to score points is off of turnovers in this game. Sonnen. James alone. In the corner. Three ball for Anthony James. On sales, you got to be a closer. And Northern Iowa today has to learn how to close the deal. How do they do that? Continue to play stingy defense on the defensive end by doubling Carl Hall and then the rotation and one and done. On the offensive end, play to your strengths. Look for Sonic. AJ, number 52 in white, Anthony James, surrounded by black jerseys, drew the foul. Number 23 in white, Sonnen will inbounds from the side. If you're Ben Jacobson right now, you're obviously able to dial up a set play. What do you think it's going to be? I'd look for some type of either inside out or penetration with ball reversal to the backside. He's got available shooters. There's one of them, chip rank number four. Now the on ball screen. James takes it himself. Under control, good spacing, successful possession. Largest lead of the game for Northern Iowa. Chip rank against Hall. They get it to him. Low post pass, Cotton no good. The rebound to Tuttle. When was the last time you saw an offensive rebound and a stick back for Wichita State? They live and die with that opportunity. James feeling it. He's in double digits. And it's an eight-point Panthers lead. Armstead can't quiet the crowd. One and done. A 15-2 run over the last five minutes. And James again. Greg Marshall wants to call off the troops. And Anthony James has gone on an individual 6-0 run for the Panthers. Anthony James, number 52 for the Northern Iowa Panthers versus the Creighton Blue Jays on January 15, 2013. And another sellout crowd here at CenturyLink Center. There you take a look at the series history between these two teams. In fact, the last five games between these two Missouri Valley Conference 
teams, they have been decided by single digits, you and I, and CU two and two in the last four games that they have met up. This is the first matchup between these two teams in the 2012. 2013 regular season. As you see, a part of the 17,000 plus that have made it here. There you see Gregory Oshanike right behind him, the All-American, Greg McDermott. You can just feel the electricity, not only in this building, but when you walk around the city, Kevin, people are just fired up for Blue Jay basketball, rightly so with the 10th ranked team coming into action here tonight. And what they have done, Scott, is improve their defense over last year's team they can stop you now. They are a great scoring team, but their defense has gone to a new level. Jays will open up with the opening possession in the 45th meeting between these two teams. You'll see a lot of ball screens by Echenique on the perimeter, and that's part of that's to open up McDermott so he cannot be double teamed. Doug McDermott is picking up right where he left off on Friday evening in the victory against Missouri State. If he didn't catch it, Doug McDermott hit the first 18 points for the Jays. In fact, he outscored Missouri State in the second half 28 to 5, 28 25. Sawn in inside. This is Tuttle. And Tuttle can't get the bucket, and there's the loose ball to Managai. Big size, but Ichinike inside makes it difficult for Tuttle to corral that. And you saw that first basket by McDermott. Mid-range game has greatly improved. And there's Gibbs. You cannot live, give Grant Gibbs an edge and let him turn the corner and get in the paint. Mitchell hits the deuce. 4-2 the score. Northern Iowa needs Deion Mitchell to have a great game. Seven assists, just one turnover in that huge win over Bradley on Saturday. They need that type of performance from Deion Mitchell today. Chapman takes over for Antoine Young. Of course, leaving the team because of graduation. And they tell us Chapman's done an exceptional job of filling that hole. There's a nice rebound there by Anthony James, the senior from St. Louis. Oh, really has. Uh, Austin Chapman has come in and run this team. He shot the ball tree mill. Gives Creighton another weapon at the three-point line. You see no double team on the big guy inside. Jake Cook is able to score. One-on-one. Right. On one. That's going to be an interesting matchup because Cook, as we found out in the shoot-arounds today, is going to match up against Doug McDermott. So the we'll see how that plays a part, not only defensively, but how that affects Jake's offensive game. Well, Ben Jackson really likes the size that he gets from Jake Cook. Ah! Ashanike trying to get the offensive glass tie up, and the possession oh. arrow will oh. favor the Northern oh. Iowa Panthers. Well, Deion Mitchell goes in there, and Echenique makes the cardinal sin of a postman. Brought the ball down below his shoulders, allowed Deion Mitchell to get the tie-up possession to Northern Iowa. That victory on Saturday for Northern Iowa, whereas Kevin mentioned in the outset, 15 threes made, seven of them by Mark Sonnen. That was the largest margin of victory for a Northern Iowa Panthers team since 91-92. Tuttle on the drive, and the Panthers have their first lead of the night on the road. Well, one thing that Northern Iowa can do is bring Echenique outside and let Tuttle go one-on-one, -on -one, as we just saw. Tuttle with that quick first step gets all the way to the basket. So does Chapman, but Chapman cannot convert. Boy, he had a great quick first step, though, didn't he? Well, this is a great matchup between uh, Mitchell and Chapman. Those guys are two of the fastest point guards in the Valley. They can go end to end a lot faster than you and I and many other guards. And there's a lob pass. Good feed by... Look inside. Gets the bucket and the foul. And he'll go for the three-point play. Anthony James, a nice lob pass because he saw that the weak side defender was not looking. There's a lob over the top. Good post up. By Cook, Echenique late, gets the foul. That's what Northern Iowa will do. They will spread you out with three-point shooters, hoping to get some one-on-one -on -one isolations inside as Cook is able to complete the three-point play. Creighton with their 5-0 start in Valley play, first time since 0-2-0-3, just breaking records team-wise and individually. And we're only halfway through this 
2012-2013 campaign. And we know the rich tradition that they have here in Omaha with this Creighton Blue Jays squad, Northern Iowa, with a terrific steal there. We talked about Northern Iowa taking away the quick hitters, making long possessions at the defensive end. And this is a great poke around here by Tuttle. Releases, comes around, makes the steal as Echenique tries to post him. We talk about the big men. First of all, Seth Tuttle, as we all know, the sophomore. Last year's Missouri Valley Conference freshman of the year. These guys can light the basketball up. Also, we talk about McDermott and Sonnen. Third and field goal percentage for Seth Tuttle. Reversely, you look at Greg Eshenike, he leads the Missouri Valley Conference in field goal percentage. Cook inside, rims out. Now, Tuttle is the career leader for Northern Iowa in field goal percentage. On the drive by Dingman, can't finish, put back, no good. And there's Tuttle. Now, Scott, Raggy is in the game now for Eshenike, so Panthers have to find him at the three-point line in transition. Whole different look when you bring in Ethan Raggy or Gregory Echenique. Really spread your defense. And James is going to be called for the walk. We have our first time out on the floor. 15-41 left here in the opening half. The visitors have the early five-point lead here in Omaha. Great Blue Jays, as we mentioned, two for seven, 28% from the field, remember. One of the better shooting teams, not only in the Valley, but in the country. Shooting over 55% through five games in Valley play. And Northern Iowa needed to get off to a good start. When you play a ranked team in the home court, you cannot get behind the eight ball. Excellent beginning here for the Panthers. Well, you know, it was interesting when we talked to Ben Jacobs and the head coach of Northern Iowa during the shoot around today. We asked him about that because you get those 17,000 here in Omaha riled up. And they'll get riled up on that triple by Chapman. You get that crowd in it, boy, it could be like a swarm of bees. You could really get way behind. So to kind of quiet this crowd down at the beginning was, I think, huge for Coach Jake's squad. Mitchell on the drive. Well, that was one of the keys. You have to get Mitchell under wraps. You cannot let him explode to the rim like that. This is a really good matchup between Chapman and Mitchell. Chapman hit a three in that last trip. And McDermott, kind of a bad angle there, and now bodies flying all over the floor. Well, Jake Cook has done an excellent job now on McDermott. There's not been any help. There's kind of some fake doubles, but basically it's been one-on-one -on -one with McDermott trying to score over Jake Cook, and Cook has held his own. There's that ball screen that drags two defenders off. Now, Tuttle can make some threes. Hasn't hit very many, but he hits enough that keeps you honest. James with seven on the shot clock. And that's exactly what Northern Iowa also needs to do here in Omaha. Hit the threes like they did on Saturday. Seven-point lead for the Cats. James with that step back creates his own separation. Quick release. You can see Raggy is out there at the three-point line. He's pulled Tuttle completely out of there. It leaves McDermott room to operate. Chapman's feeling it. 0 for 7 against Missouri State. 2 for 2 from beyond 3 here early on at home. Well, that was a guy, if the Panthers were let anybody shoot, it was going to be Chapman. They may have to change their strategy after hitting those back-to-back -back threes. Mitchell's kind of halfway fake doubling on McDermott, and it's leaving Chapman open for those good looks. Gibbs trying to make the save, and it's going to be out Grant and Northern Iowa basketball. See Anthony James, a little step back for some separation. Knocks a big three, and there's Mitchell caught in the double team. Chapman answers for the Blue Jays. Well, we said in the opening, this may be a lot of three balls flying through the air, and so far that has been true. Right. Given good to Tuttle, and he lost the handle. And they're going to say Northern Iowa will retain possession, Kevin, with 19 seconds left on the shot clock. If you watch this coaching move now, when Doug McDermott went to the bench, Ben Jackson took out... Jake Cook and rested him also as soon as Doug McDermott back in the game. 
Jake Cook back in the game. Ben Jameson trying to keep his defender fresh. And McDermott, one for four to start this game. Cook, three for four with seven points for the Panthers. And how about Northern Iowa? Right now, again, early, small sample size, outscoring the Jays in the paint 10 to two. Dingman, and out of the timeout for Coach McDermott's Creighton Blue Jays, who trail it by six. There's a switch, you got McDermott on James inside, but Raggy does what he does best. Quick release. Well, you gotta get into his space. That young man can fire it in a wink of an eye. Raggy had six threes earlier this season against the Drake Bulldogs. He's had six threes three times this season. You have to find him. You just cannot. He Cook just peaks just enough, and Raggy is in his shooting motion as soon as that ball hits his hands. First in the conference and threes made heading into tonight's contest. What a weapon James. off the bench. James off that down pick. There's another guy with a quick trigger. Northern Iowa will not back down against this Highly potent Creighton Blue Jays squad. We told you these two teams can shoot it. And we're seeing that here early on. Now James trying for the steal. And now Doug McDermott one for five as Bohannon gets the rebound. Well, Northern Iowa, they're faking the double. Then they're going hard. It's got to, Doug has, has not quite settled into what they're doing. And that's what the Northern Iowa is going to keep changing up how they defend against him. Trying to keep Doug McDermott guessing at the offensive end. Dingman hits the triple. Dingman for three. And there they, go the Jays. Four they, for five from three-point country. And the UNI lead is down to two. Now one thing that you and I want to do is take away the quick hitters, especially from the three-point line. As Ben Jacobson said, when they make ten threes, that's 30 points to make up. Hook on Raggy. Just off the mark. Jays could tie it on this possession. Chapman tried to dish it to McDermott, but James was there for the steal. A good heads up play by James to keep playing through the possession. Look at this possession. You have four purple jerseys on the perimeter, only one inside, and there it goes to Cook with 15 on the shot clock. On McDermott. Jake Cook already with seven tonight. Raggy with some help in the steal. Here come the Jays. Man, I got some help. Well, that was good transition defense by the Panthers because you do not want Creighton to get in those open court situations. They will spread you with the three-point line. Managa on the drive, and we're tied at 18. You see Northern Iowa go below the screener on those ball screens. Creighton is starting to turn the corner. Chapman has turned the corner. And that time, Dingman's able to turn the corner. Cook inside, beautiful feed by Sonic. Well, the Jays have locked Sonic up. He has not gotten a good look from the three-point line. And now they get it into the block to McDermott. And the Panthers will pick up a foul here. Their third of the first half. Now those are the quick hitters we talked about. McDermott right to the block. Ball in the corner. Quick pin down. Doug McDermott excels at angles in the post. Will Artino checks in for the first time along with Grant Gibbs. As Mitchell. And Peel come in for Coach Jake's Northern Iowa Panthers. Echenique with two fouls. Greg McDermott could not go back to him this half, so. Mitchell on the steal on the inbounds, going coast to coast. And they're going to call a foul. And it looks like it's going to be on Dion Mitchell, the sophomore from Texas. Dion Mitchell, his second personal foul. The Panthers' fourth team foul. Now this is the second on Dion Mitchell. They need him in the game. He's going to come out. Number 23, Mark Sonnen returning to the lineup. He's in for Dion Toughest Mitchell. call in basketball right there. The charge block. 
Managa tries to get back and get his feet set. Here's a look at Dion, who was not quite sure of that himself, and now Ben Jacobson plead his case with the official. Sonnen with a nice weak side rebound. One and done on that possession for the Jays. James weaving through traffic and gets the deuce. He just sliced through that defense like butter in a hot knife. Well, James had a slow start to the season, but he's really been feeling his way here lately. And there's a nice with a nice feed from Gibbs. Well, that's what Gibbs does. You give him space and let him see the court. He will make a play that beats you. One of the best assist man in the country and the leader in the Valley, assist to ratio and assists. And not a natural point guard. That's the beauty of it. Tuttle gets inside and Peel's going to be called for the offensive foul. And that will be his second here in the first half. Blue Jays basketball when we come back. Right now, Northern Iowa leads it 22-20. After a timeout on the floor. Heads up. The Panthers just don't seem to want to back down here, even on the road here today. Well, the Panthers have attacked the interior of Creighton's defense. 14 points to paint for Northern Iowa to just six for Creighton. But the Jays do what they do best. They knock down that three ball. Four of six from the arc. Shout out Doug McDermott. Only one for five to start things out in this opening half of play here at home after coming off that 39-point performance in the victory against Missouri State last Friday night. And he's the Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Week for the fifth time this season. Well, Seth Tuttle is matched onto McDermott as Cook went to the bench. Chapman's already hit a couple of trays here early on. Shot clock at six. Gibbs. Grand Gibbs for three. Five threes already made in this opening half for the Creighton Blue Jays. They are shooting over 50% for each of their recent five games in the Missouri Valley Conference. Not only that, Scott, they have four guys in the top 10 in the Valley in three-point percentage. There's just no one you can help off of as Gibbs proved that one right there. You cannot leave Grant Gibbs. You cannot leave Chapman. Jays with the first lead since the 18-minute mark in this one. And how about Gibbs? driving the lane and he's going to get the bucket and he'll go for the traditional three. When I asked Greg McDermott who the leader of this team was, he said it's Grant Gibbs. If you play off of him, this is what he does. He gets the open spot, strong upper body, creates the contact. Now he has the opportunity for the three-point play. The transfer from Gonzaga. You may not see it in those scoring stats, but he is responsible for a lot of J points. Tuttle on Raggi. And Gibbs doing battle with Bohannon there. And I'm going to say it's Northern Iowa basketball as Avery Dingman will check back in for Coach McDermott's squad. And the Blue Jays have taken the three ball away from Sonnen. Sonnen without a shot attempt yeah. in this game. Bohannon is another player that the Jays will not let get an open look. Well, now, last time Northern Iowa has won a road game against a top ranked team you have to go back to December of 2006 against Wichita State offensive rebound by Cook and that foul looks like it's going to be on Raggi that's his second personal foul now Kevin so the foul situation getting interesting at least early on here for Ethan Raggi and coach McDermott and the Creighton Blue Jays is Gregory Ashanike already on the bench with two fouls here in the first half it's nice to have a lot of five men as Artino comes in, gives the Blue Jays some size inside. You and I have done a good job of really bottling up McDermott. That time yeah. he passed it back out. He's Artino. Well, you know, when you concentrate so much on McDermott, especially now that he has to play inside with the bigs in foul trouble, somebody's got to be open. 
And that time it was Artino on the weak side. Nine, nothing run right now for Creighton. Artino is very talented. Has had a hard time getting minutes for this J team because of Echenique and Raggi, but it's the angle. Bangs, creates some space, finishes it, the left hand. Hey, a quick reminder, stay tuned for our halftime report, a presentation of State Farm Insurance for auto, home, life, and banking. Get to a better state. James right down the drain. Anthony James now has nine on the night. Well, Anthony James, a slow start to the season, but he has really got it going in these last couple games for the Panthers. He scored 13 of their final 17 points against Evansville. And there's that quick hitter we talked about. Well, he got great position inside that time on Cook and also created the foul on Jake. And now he'll go for the traditional three here. Well, Doug McDermott understands passing angles that the ball's going from the top of the key to the wing. He's working his man up the lane, creates the space, makes it an easy pass for his teammate. Managa coming back in as Austin Chapman will take a seat on Coach McDermott's bench. As Doug has just hit just his second field goal. And as you talked about, Kevin, at least in the opening minutes of this one, about 15, the Northern Iowa Panthers have done a terrific job, at, especially Jay Cook, of bottling up Doug McDermott, who is playing a lot more post than what we've seen in previous games because, as we mentioned, that foul trouble that Creighton's gotten into here in the first half of play. Well, I watched that game against Missouri State. What he did in the second half was oh. unbelievable. 14 straight made baskets. He did it from every possible way. Post up, mid-range, threes. What a performance. James on Managa. AJ, drop step. Look at Cook on the offensive glass. Lost the handle. And here come the Jays. McDermott, oh, he couldn't finish. Just a little off the mark. The pass from Managa. James. Now this is a pace that Creighton likes. Cook with a good read and a steal. Now Ben Jake's been telling his team, let's slow it down. We want long possessions. Make them guard us at their defensive end. Again, Sonnen, real quiet. Yeah, only Good one field job. goal attempt to, at, to this point. James driving on Managa with seven on the shot clock. Well, Managa is the Jays' best defender. James has been able to score. He's been able to get some angles off some ball screens. McDermott sets up for three. Set play call from the bench on that plays. Artino gets a pin down as Doug McDermott. Good look from the top of the key and drains the three ball. His ability to shoot that three. Quick release, gets balance, really adds to his game as Tuttle. Shows his ability to put the ball on the floor and scores on Artino. Bohannon Garden Gibbs, two high school graduates from Linmar High School. McDermott now posting up on Cook, trying to get a move inside, and he traveled. Northern Iowa basketball when we come back. 2.34 left here in our opening half. Right now, the 10th rank Jays with Doug McDermott. They lead it by five. Blue Jays under head coach Greg McDermott opened the game just two of seven from the field. Since that time, they're now shooting almost 65%, 11 of 17. Came out a little chilly like the weather outside, Kevin, but have really started to heat things up here against Coach Jake's Northern Iowa Panthers in the latter stages of this first half of play. And they've shook Doug McDermott loose. Some, a quick post up, then ran a set to get him a three. Anthony James has really kept the Panthers close with 11 points here in the first half. 
and both teams trying to survive foul problems. Echenique with two for the Jays, along with Raggy with two. Traveling, Blue Jay basketball. And the Panthers have to sit Deion Mitchell here for extended amount of this half, along with Austin Peel picked up two off the bench. Six turnover by Northern Iowa. Creighton's bench outscoring Northern Iowa's here in the first half. 10 zip. Gibbs. And a foul away from the basketball. Now before the shot on Northern Iowa's number 20, Jake Cook. Jake Cook second. picks up the foul, and that will be his second personal foul. So as Kevin just alluded to, fouls starting to rack up for both squads in the opening half of this one. Shooting one and one. Uche substitution is number 24, Nevin Johnson. Nevin Johnson, freshman from Houston, Texas, will check in for Coach McDermott. And McDermott misses the free throw. And there's Johnson. Nice hustle. Feed to McDermott somehow. He gets the shot off with the left hand. And now Ben Jacobson wants to burn his first half timeout. And he's working on the officials right now. 30 second timeout for the Panthers. Let's take a look at that missed free throw here by McDermott. And off the loose ball, McDermott gets the ball. And there you see the contact. And I think that's what Coach Jake was talking it over with the official on that last foul call to Sonnen bumping with Don McDermott. Let's take a look at it once again. Johnson just checking in the game, and there's the contact. And Doug will get the two points there. Don McDermott tonight with a quiet 10 points, just four of nine. And we say just four of nine. It's complimentary to the young man and what he is doing this year and what he has done in his two plus seasons in Omaha. James, a little strong and Tina with the rebound. Many across the country, many scribes, many national recognized scribes will say that Doug McDermott right now is the player of the year in the entire country. And right now, his Blue Jays are up 35-28 as we near the one-minute mark left here in the opening half of play of the NBC on ESPN3. James pulls up from 15, and he drains it. And A.J. has 13 here in the first half. Cuts into that deficit it's down to five with under a minute left here in the opening half of play. Well Anthony James has been able to get some space off those ball screens to get his shot off as McDermott with a face up goes in and out. Artino with the put back. Artino. Six points off the bench for Will Artino. Back to a seven point lead. Now there's a four second differential between the shot clock and the game clock here for the Northern Iowa Panthers. Martino has given the Jays a huge lift after Echenique and Raggi get in foul trouble. And you know, Kev, Echenique left way early in this first half. James just inside the three-point arc. Johnson with the rebound with seven seconds left. And James will pick up the foul. As that's just Anthony's first personal foul here. That's going to put Johnson at the free throw line with just six seconds left. And Doug McDermott comes out so he doesn't pick up a foul in these closing seconds. Number 24, Nevin Johnson, shooting one and the bonus. Johnson, the freshman from Texas, in and out. 
Rank with the rebound. Now time. Down to two. James with one second. Pulls up. Hits it at the buzzer. And Northern Iowa gets a little momentum going to the locker room at the half. Trailing 37 to 32 here after 20 minutes of play from Omaha. And Coventry Healthcare proudly presents the second half of the Missouri Valley Conference Game of the Week, MVC on ESPN3. Kevin Lehman, Chuck Jackson, our tire, Niles Media Group crew, Scott Warman with you. Great to have you alongside. Good one here. Tenth rank Creighton will have the basketball to open up the second 20 minutes of play with a five-point lead, 37-32. Both teams survived some foul problems in the first half. You got Mitchell back on the court for the Panthers. Etchenike back on the court for the Jays. Great McDermott, four of 10 from the field in the opening half of play. Etchenike wide open underneath, and he gets his first two points of the evening. Set play to get the big man going. Greg McDermott coming out of a halftime or a timeout is excellent in that playbook, getting some isolations. Creighton 14-0 with the lead at the half this season. Now Tully needs to attack two fouls on the big guy. And he does, gets his own rebound, and there you see Echenique, who was the leader in blocks in the Valley last year. A little hesitant with those two fouls in the opening 20 minutes, didn't want to pick up number three there. Yeah, had to back off a little bit, especially on the missed shot and the rebound that Tuttle went right back up. And Tuttle is a great repeat jumper. He has excellent set of hands, high school quarterback. He doesn't mishandle those basketballs very often. Managa, just short. And after a cool start to the non-conference season, for Giants, he has uh, opened things up from beyond three in the conference season, going 13 of 19, and Anthony James pick it up right where he left off here in the second half. Well, James has the hot hand. Son and, and man, they got to kind of cancel each other out. Yeah. Then I got one for one. Son and only one look at the basket. Chapman pulls up. Austin nice Chapman. touch there by Austin Chapman. Well, we talked to Greg McDermott about his team, and he said a lot of people think Chapman is our weak point on offense. Believe me, he is not. You saw him able to turn a corner, a little mid-range hanger for the Jays. Tuttle on Eshenike, and there's Managa with the steal. Finds Gibbs. Grant Gibbs. Basketball and IQ, Grant Gibbs stays with the play, misses a shot, comes back in bounce. Gets his own tip in. Those are the baskets that Northern Iowa's trying to eliminate. Quick hitters, transition points. Yeah, Northern Iowa's got to get transition defense. Got to get back on defense as quickly as possible or you don't get that second chance points. There's Tuttle with the three. Just the second triple of the evening for the Northern Iowa Panthers after they hit 15 in the victory against Bradley on Saturday. Chapman on the drive. Chapman. Chapman's starting to find the seams as Tuttle only his sixth three of this season. Now the officials stop play here at the 17-13 mark. I'm not sure what this discussion is about, but they're going to well, go talk with the coaches. All right, we're, officials, as you can see on the far side, are going to take a look at a potential inadvertent elbow. And as you know, Kevin, this is all about concussions in all of sports, but especially college basketball. If it's inadvertent and above the shoulders, they're going to look at a replay, can assess a flagrant foul if they deem this as above the shoulders. We'll get a good look at it right now. Chapman, the big screen by Echenique. The tunnel takes one right in the choppers as Chapman turns the corner. Jacobson, ben Jacobson talking over with his troops. Mike Stewart, Kelly Self, and Terry Weimer are our officials here for today's game. Watch the tunnel now as it comes up. 
right there. Ooh, man, popped him right in the nose. And obviously inadvertent because yeah, I was just you say try to do that on purpose, but it stunned Seth Tuttle momentarily. You get a look at Johnny Moran. GA position now for the Panthers as he was their lone senior on last year's squad. We'll see what the officials come out with this one. I'm surprised they saw that. I mean, we had to look at it twice. He was already past Tuttle when his forearm flew up and caught Tuttle right in the nose. And it looks like we're going to play on. No foul called there, as I think they saw exactly what at least you and I saw, Kevin. It looked more inadvertent as... Chapman was on the drive trying to keep his balance. Cook on McDermott inside. Jake had a strong opening 10 minutes against McDermott here on the road. Well, that little pause in action gave Ben Jason an opportunity to set up a play. Isolation for Cook inside on McDermott. Cook gets the angle and scores. A lot of ball screens by Echenique. Big body out there screening Chapman and and Mitchell's fighting over the top of those. That, that wears into you offensively, too, when you keep hitting those big bodies defensively. And there's a Creighton turnover. That is the seventh turnover for Coach McDermott's Creighton Blue Jays. Now let's see if Tuttle tries to isolate Echenique again here on the perimeter. Echenique with two fouls. If they can get a third, he would have to go back to the bench. Managa's going to be whistled for the foul here. And that's going to be his second. And Ethan Raggi will come into the game for Coach McDermott. Go ahead, sorry. Greg Kyle. McDermott said Managa can get over screens as well as any player he's ever coached. That time, fighting over, cut the edge, and got a foul call. Battle down low in the paint. And this one's going to be on Creighton. Creighton Looks like Doug McDermott will pick McDermott up the foul. That's his second. Well, Tuttle's been floating to the perimeter, letting Cook get isolated on the block against McDermott. Oh, another way to stop a great score, make him play defense. Mitchell, way off the mark. And misfired huge on that one. Deion Mitchell, they need to get him back in the action where he gets some penetrations. McDermott said, give it to me, big boy. I'm going to go to work. Part of the 18 straight points that he scored on the road last Friday at JQH Arena in Springfield against Missouri State hit 14 straight field goals. Here comes Chapman on the run. Chapman comes at you so hard that you peek off those three-point shooters. But I'll tell you, Doug McDermott has a different look on his face this half. He does. And he'll go to the free throw line when we come back. 15-34 left here in the second half. Six-point lead for the 10th ranked Jays here at home. Going against that Bradley Steel machine, Sim Edwards and Walt Lemon Jr. They're going to set the... Uh, Steel record for the Valley at this pace. Desmar Jackson had 29 in both of his performances last week at home against Indiana State and on the road against Wichita. And the only problem was is this young man put on a bigger clinic in Springfield, Missouri last Friday as he hits two free throws. And it's now an eight-point lead for the Jays right now at 49-41. Well, McDermott with 14 points, but the second half he's had a much more aggressive look on his face. I think the Panthers may have confused him a bit with those fake doubles. Got a little coach at halftime. Just take it quick and strong to the basket. Tunnel inside on Raggi. And the possession arrow will favor. Oh, they're going to call a foul. I thought they were going to call a tie-up. And they're going to call a foul on Creighton. And the Jays pick up their third team foul. And it looks like Chip Rank is bleeding after that scramble for the loose ball. Yeah, Rank caught one in the nose or right above the eye in that little 
Scrum. It's an uh, injury he suffered against Buffalo early in the season, but Coach Marty Simmons thinks that he's about as healthy as he's been all year long, and you can see he's really shooting the ball here as Valley play is opened up. He's a guy. Inside, and he's called for the offensive foul. And that will be Seth's first person. Tuttle's known for hooking the defender on this type of play. Watch his left elbow. Nope, just a shove off that time. A lot of times he sends, sticks that chicken wing out and hooks the defender, but that time just tried to shove him off, create a little space. Now Northern Iowa had a lead by as many as seven in the first half. It's now the largest lead, as we mentioned, for Creighton at 10 points. McDermott inside, double team. Nice look. Gibbs on the drive, and he'll get a whistle here in the foul called. From the opening eight minutes, Creighton shot 33% from the field. From that point, they are now shooting over 66%. That move by Doug McDermott shows what great game he has. He's, the double team came, he back dribbled to create more space so Gibbs could cut down the lane and get a shot at it. That is a very intelligent play. Gibbs was running out of time. He's trying to get somebody to cut. Nobody at home. No one read it. Northern Iowa. Here's James right to the hole. Anthony James is putting on a show on the road here tonight. Well, Gibbs is known for Bouncing the ball off that defender on those OB unders. James turns a corner. Raggy can't get there in time. James with 19 of the 43 by the Panthers. He has kept Northern Iowa in this game. He's coming at those ball screens, Scott, with full steam because the Jays want to pick up their pressure point a little bit lower than other teams. Can't get with that ball screen, and the defender cannot get him cut off. James has gotten the basket a number of times tonight. Jays lead down to seven here. Just about 13 and a half minutes left in this second half of play from CenturyLink Center in Omaha, MVC on ESPN3, and there's the ninth turnover for Creighton. And James is going right to the hole. There's a block by Echenique, his first of the night. That was quick off the floor. I thought James was going to score on that. Managa wide open just inside the arc. And McDermott. Nice cut by Gray. Our Doug McDermott with the easy twos. He made the great cut. And that time, you saw the vision by Gregory Eschenike. When your big man can pass, it makes you very difficult to defend. A little miscommunication as Jay Cook told Bohannon. That one was my fault. McDermott will curl cut, wide open, easy basket. Those are those quick hitters the Panthers are trying to eliminate. Sonnen, and another timeout taken by Jacobson as he stops it with 12.31 left and his team down by seven at 53-46. Why the timeout there, Kev? I think Sonnen surprised the Jays on that last one. No, he's a three-point shooter. I think what Coach Jakes is going to do here is change the way they're defending Doug McDermott because the second half, the focus has been getting the ball to McDermott. Now what's happening is the other Jays players are getting open because of all the tension on Doug McDermott. Coach Jake needs to get this straightened out. I'd like to thank the following Operation Blue Jay sponsors for their support. Lansky, The Reader, Weight Outdoor, Lincoln Financial, the U.S. Senior Open, Allegiant Great Health, and First National Bank. Well, we talk about these two teams shooting the three. Only four attempts in the first seven and a half minutes here in the second half. And for these two teams to only do that in the first seven and a half minutes of half, that's quite an accomplishment. Well, we talked about <laughs> the 26th year of the arc, and it's going to come down to who defends the three better. Both teams have really extended their defense trying to take away the three ball. It's opened up a lot of inside play for Northern Iowa. 
in for the Jays. They go inside to Echenique. Echenique, and there's the double. Fights through it. Gets his rebound. Put back is good. And the basket by Gregory Echenique. That big front line is difficult to deal with. Echenique pound the glass. And Doug McDermott occupying space. You see Tuttle just muscles around Tuttle. Sonnen tries to block the big man out. He brings it down, but Cook can't get a piece of it. Echenique at the line, trying to get the traditional three-point play for the big man. The transfer from Rutgers. The goggles and the pink shoes. He has really trimmed his body up. He has. It's in its... We've seen he's more active defensively. He's out on the court. And the first is a make for Jay Cook. Hey, the NCAA Division I men's basketball March Madness is coming to Kansas City. Experience it live and celebrate 75 years of March Madness on March 22nd and 24th at Sprint Center, hosted by the Missouri Valley Conference. Visit NCAA.com slash MBB tickets to make a date with champions. Well, Cook, one of the best free throw shooters in the Valley. He is so versatile for Northern Iowa. Over 900 points, over 500 rebounds, over 100 trays, 100 blocks. He needs a few more steals to match Kyle Weems as the only player with big numbers in all those stat categories. Shot clock now at 13. Dingman on the drive, and he stripped him foul by Bohannon. And these fouls are starting to add up with both clubs. That's a 15 foul now on the Cats. Well, Scott, what you're seeing is all that pressure on the three-point line to take away the three. Creighton now putting the floor on the deck and driving it to the hoop to relieve the pressure out there on the arc, and they are picking up fouls as they attack the basket. Seth Tuttle coming in for Jake Cook. And Artino back in for the Jays after that big first half lift by Wilt. Artino so went three for three in a reserve role with Echenique had some foul problems. And now McDermott back in. Now Chip Rank's going to have to guard Doug McDermott at the defensive end. This Cook needs a rest. James, who has been super hot here tonight. Crowd wanted a walk. Kept this pivot foot down. Tuttle trying to make the save. Does the James with 10 on the shot clock. James. Now Maniga. And it'll be Northern Iowa basketball, which is five ticks left on this possession. And the Creighton fans love the tenacity on defense here in Omaha. Well, great effort by Manigat on the floor. Getting the floor burst, trying to pick up a loose ball. Panthers need a quick hitter. Cook back in the lineup. He can shoot threes. And you still see Ben Jacobson trying to rest. Jake Cook when Doug McDermott is out of the game. Doug back in the game. Jake Cook back in the game. Down to four, Cook with the triple attempt. Rebound by Tuttle, blocked by Artino. And a second chance by Tuttle, no good. Here come the Jays on the run. Dingman short on the three. Here's where Mitchell's dangerous. And he's got a one on four, and he traveled. Didn't have the numbers, and he traveled. Austin Chapman. Back in defensive position. I think it surprised Deion Mitchell how quickly Chapman was able to set up. Ninth turnover here this evening for Northern Iowa. McDermott inside. And the Creighton Blue Jays have their largest lead of the night at 12. And now Doug McDermott is now number five on the list in scoring in Creighton Blue Jay history with that deuce. Well, the Panthers switched. Mitchell ended up on McDermott. Artino recognized it. High, low, instantly. McDermott scored on the point guard. Cook stripped. 
Coach Jake's going to need a timeout. Jay's score on this one. And Coach McDermott calls a timeout as Managa picks up the loose ball. 7.35 left here in the second half. And you're right about that. You have the under eight timeout coming momentarily, but you really starting to feel the energy and the electricity from the crowd here at CenturyLink Center with a 12-point lead for the Creighton Blue Jays. And it started with that play by Manigot, got on the deck, got the crowd into it. And Greg McDermott saved a timeout for Jacobson because Ben was going to need one. But Greg calls it because he didn't want the tie-up, was able to keep possession. For the Blue Jays, during the timeout, number 10, Brent Gibbs. Well, the interesting, one of the interesting sideline stories or sidebar stories to this game with 7.35 left. The 7.35 left here in the second half of play is that the Blue Jays, building this largest lead of the night, have only one three attempt in the second 20 minutes of play. But they've been getting to the basket, Scott, because of that spreading out that defense. The Panthers have had to come outside the three-point line, and it's allowed McDermott to get operate inside. Picked up a foul there. Creighton Blast basketball. When we come back, right now they have the 12-point lead here at home. Now Corver can light it up in the old Civic. He'd walk out of that tunnel cocked and ready to fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jays will have the... Basketball out of the under eight timeout and a fresh 35 on the shot clock. And Northern Iowa is going to have to try to get some stops here. Boy, kind roll as Doug McDermott shakes his head on that one. Hit the front of the rim. But that's that mid range game. We talked to him that shoot around how much he's improved that face up game. Went to some NBA camps this summer and really helped him out. Rank tries to answer, and there's Artino with another huge rebound. Scott, still no bench points for the UNI Panthers yeah. as Rank, Bohannon, and Peel have not been able to score 14 bench points for the Blue Jays. That was just the first three make for Doug McDermott here tonight. He got the switch inside. Sonnen is trying to battle McDermott as Doug goes right to the block. Double team by Rank. Offensive foul called on the preseason All-American. Well, Chip Rank third. saw that his guard was overmatched. Went to the double quickly, caused the turnover. That's three on Doug McDermott. Only five three attempts for Northern Iowa here in the second half. One for five. Remember, they're coming off a 15-3 make performance against Bradley. Inside, Cook wide open. Nice well, cut to the hole there. Both teams have been able to go inside because taking away the three. Mark Sonnen has not gotten a three attempt up this game no. after going seven for nine against Bradley. James collects the McDermott miss. And also Creighton has made some adjustments. These ball screens for James. You can see Artino hangs with him with another step. Cook walked all over the place. Blue Jay basketball. Ball screens. The person to fit in the screener is staying with James. An extra dribble. It's leaving Cook open. But that time Artino with a... Excellent recovery to take away the three ball by Cook. But that's the change that Greg McDermott made at halftime. Ball screens, we got to stay with Anthony James. Another slide and flatten him out so he cannot turn a corner and get to the basket. It's been very effective for the Jays here in the second half. Managa and Raggi come in for Coach McDermott. Meanwhile, Coach Jacobs has He's brought in a couple of substitutions, including Bohannon. A good talk with Deion Mitchell just now, Coach Jake. He needs Deion Mitchell to get involved in this game offensively. Seven assists by Mitchell against Bradley. Just one tonight. McDermott on Cook. Throws it up and in. McDermott. Trying to find the foul. Didn't get the call. 
And it's a 14 point lead for the Jays now at 66. 52. Excellent defense by Jake Cook, and you hear this often. Even better offense by Doug McDermott as he kissed that last one off the glass. And James, who has effectively, through the better part of tonight, going right to the hole there, just can't convert, going to that left lane. And now Creighton has a chance to even add to their largest lead of the night right now with under five minutes left. Ragi, just short. They've taken away Roggy's look also as he's only got three three-point attempts up and has hit one. Now Cook going to go to work inside on McDermott. And that is Doug's fourth foul. Isolation. Look at that. Now that is concentration. Keeping your eye on the prize. Look at the footwork. Balance. Squares the shoulders best he can and kisses it off the window. The best and is dead. The coach telling him to get up and get back on defense. Go play some D, son. <laughs> And as you said, the fourth on Doug McDermott is going to take a seat on the bench with 4.36 left in this game. Coach Mack still reminds me even to this day when his son, right before his freshman year, media day, the Missouri Valley Conference was sitting there telling me about I was seriously contemplating registering Doug McDermott. He always looks at me and goes, look how much I know. <laughs> I don't even know my own kid. <laughs> Best coaching move ever made. And Doug McDermott went to Cedar Falls through eighth grade. So, mm -hmm. And he said, I grew up kind of disliking the Blue Jays and cheering for the Panthers through middle school. He said, obviously, it's changed now. What a pleasant young man to visit with. No doubt. Eight on the shot clock. Chapman. Wide open. Gibbs. Grant. And now somehow, someway, Northern Iowa is going to have to try to find a way to open up some three opportunities here. Down now, 68-54 with under four minutes left in this second half of play. Well, this is the improvement you see with the Jays. They can defend better than last year's team as Manic got goes right over the top of that screen. Cook. With 10 on the shot clock. Three. Strong. Gibbs rebound. Well, we've seen that diagonal pass by you and I many times in the past. The Jays have taken that away this game. We have not seen very much of the ability to throw it cross court and play three on two. That time, Bohanna with a nice look, but not able to knock it down. Great basketball. When we come back, final 315 left here in Omaha. 10th ranked team up by 14. Welcome back to Omaha. 315 left here with the second half. Tim Great Jays lead it 68 to 54. Time now for our game reset. And as you see, both teams with seven fouls. Great with three timeouts left. Northern Iowa two and the Cats have the possession arrow favoring them right now down by 14 points. And the Northern Iowa Panthers tonight in the second half. One of seven from three in the second half. Two of 11 for the game. Well, one of the keys for a Northern Iowa win is to continue their hot streak after hitting 15 threes Saturday against Bradley. As you said, Scott, just two of 11 tonight. And that's the defense of the Jays have not given them any open looks. Austin Chapman hits the first free throw. He now has 11 on the night. Osana still without a three-point attempt. Chapman hit a couple of big threes early on when the Jays in the first half were facing a deficit against this pesky Northern Iowa Panthers squad. Jayhans Monica has done an excellent job on Son and Cook. Wide open triple. And now two for 12 on the night from three. Well, there's a play that the Panthers have made a living off of that ball screen throw it back to weak side where you've got three offensive players toe line against two defenders. But Cook not able to hit the much needed three. Gibbs was trapped as the double team he was facing and he calls the timeout. 30 second timeout. 
taken by the Creighton Blue Jays there. As obviously the Panthers down by 16, trying to go for the steal here. Boys Green Dodge, Chrysler Cheap Mazda, Sid Dillon Chevrolet, Buick Cadillac, Mazda GMC, the Harry K. Ford Store, and McMullen Ford. So Creighton trying to hold on here, Kevin, and go to 6-0 in conference play. And again, for the first time in school history, go to 17-1 and overall. And you kind of had to sit back and think at least a little bit, even though they know how tough Northern Iowa can be overlooking this game because lurking in the shadows on Saturday down at Coke Arena is Greg Marshall's Wichita State Shockers Club, which should be an outstanding match. Coach Marshall has another terrific ball club, especially with all the seniors that graduated from last year's Valley Championship team. And Carl Hall could be back in action tomorrow night. If so, he's obviously going to play on Saturday against the Jays, and that'll give uh, Wichita State a huge lift. Yeah, play Hall. Anthony Early, Malcolm Armstead, and really that recruiting class by Greg Marshall has been unbelievable. Oh, unbelievable. Saw Early's 39-point performance last week against Southern Illinois. He is an incredible player, and that will be Northern Iowa basketball. And Malcolm Armstead, physical point guard, transferred from Oregon, has really given the Shockers a lift at the defensive end. He had a big game offensively the other day. And just think, besides Hall, they have two other starters on the shelf. Oh, nice pass inside to James as he now has 22 on the night. But just think about when Greg Marshall's squad can get 100% healthy, what they're doing without those three players for a better part of almost a month's worth of time. Yeah, Malcolm Armstead starting to score a little bit for him at 21 in that loss at Evansville. Of course, call all out with a broken thumb and Wesleyan Baker to get those guys healthy. It's been a mash unit for Greg Marshall. Yes. McDermott trying to post up Simon, got the switch again inside. And he'll go to the line. Well, he really went to work from block to block when he got the switch, and that's something that Greg McDermott talked about. If we can get them to switch on the ball screen, get a guard on Doug, we send him right to the block. Sonnen battled all he could, but the All-American got the best of him. McDermott with 10 in the first half. 26 now on the night. And we, we mentioned we saw a different look on his face when he came out at halftime. A little yep. more determined, more aggressive. James is going to be called for the offensive foul. Offensive foul against number 52. Anthony and I thought James Northern James Iowa did a good job on McDermott in the early minutes. Faking double teams and sending a double team. He was a little hesitant certainly changed his mindset when he came out the second half. Doug McDermott, he's got 16 second half points for a total of few minutes of 26, and Panthers with a steal. Mitchell on the drive. Deion Mitchell. And a quick two there to make it 72-58. And McDermott with four fouls intelligently led, gave him the layup. There you see Gray McDermott shouting instructions on the Play here uh, the full court pressure by Northern Iowa down by 14. 124 left in the second half of play. And Managa will break the pressure with the pass to Chapman. Now Gibbs finds a seam in the defense and a nice dish to McDermott. Gibbs understands space and pace as he slows down, open up the passing lane. Now Sonnen finally gets loose for a three. First of the game. First triple of the night at the one minute mark. Now a two on one and now Doug McDermott will hand it to Managa. Yeah, you and I has to spread their defense now over 94 feet and just too many weapons by Creighton. James from downtown. Three point basket, Anthony James. And a timeout taken by. Timeout. Northern Iowa. Timeout taken by Northern Iowa. 
Anthony James with 23 points tonight. Straight on, ripples the nylon. Too little, too late. All right, time now for our Players of the Game, a presentation of Coventry Healthcare. Visit CoventryHealthcare.com for more information. Health, wellness, Coventry Healthcare. Anthony James with 25, Doug McMurt McDermott with 28. 18 in the second half. What's up with this McDermott kid in the second half? <laughs> Pretty quiet the first half, but the second half, he lit it up much better for him from an office of statistical standpoint here at home against Northern Iowa. And of course, we talked about his amazing feat last Friday night against Missouri State on the road as he scored, what was it, 28 of his 39 in that second half of play. And you know what dad's going to get on him about? Only four rebounds. He's going to hear from Pops on that one. Jump ball, the ball. And jump ball is the is call. Possession error will favor the Northern Iowa Panthers as Marvin Singleton, checking in the first time, gets the call there. And now here comes the starting lineup back in for Ben Jacobs and squad. Well, his bench got a turnover. Now he brings in the starters for a quick hitter. Cook on Rogge. Jake burns another timeout. I believe that is his last timeout at 33 seconds left. And the faithful here at Omaha don't like that last call. Well, you're always teaching throughout the course of this game, Scott, and that's what Coach Jake's doing right now. We a situation where they're going to have to try to make a quick steal and a quick basket. Well, you know, we talk about a lot of surprises this season, especially in Valley play. As I think first and foremost, what sticks into a lot of people's minds is the start that Illinois State has got yet to win in the Missouri Valley Conference play. And of course, they were preseason number two behind Creighton. It was a start of Greg Marshall, what his team has only lost two games. And again, with all those injuries and so many new faces coming back. But I think the other intriguing story in the Missouri Valley Conference that I think a lot more was expected from Coach Jake's squad up in Cedar Falls. And you know, they're just kind of sitting around lurking at the midway point at nine and eight and two and three in conference play here in the middle part of January. And I think a lot of people expected maybe a little bit more from him, his team, just because there were so many seniors coming back. Only losing Johnny Moran and took on the most difficult schedule. They played Louisville, Stanford, Memphis, UNLV. As the All-American puts a finishing touch on that one. The foul is on number 33, Austin Peel. That will be his third. The Panthers' 10th team foul. Blue Jays into the double bonus. Doug McDermott to the line. Not much more you can say about that, my friend. <laughs> he let that one talk for itself. I have a feeling we'll see that on a sports center tonight. Into the great lineup for Doug McDermott and Grant Gibbs. Doug McDermott finishes with 31 on the night. And you say this all the time, you know, he had to, he had to work for them. First half, but a little easier in the second half is Marvin Singleton. Singleton gets one in, and this is a game, you know, Coach Jake and Coach Mack, long history together. This is a tough one for them to play because they are friends for 24 years as they go to midcourt and shake hands. And Ray McDermott tops Ben Jacobson tonight at home as the 10th ring Jays defeat the Northern Iowa Panthers. The final here from Omaha, 79 to 68. Very impressive second half for Creek. It was, and led by McDermott, came out a determined young man in the second half. Anthony James, great effort for the Panthers, but just not enough. Couldn't get any points off the bench. Blue Jays, huge contribution, especially in the first half to get them through foul problems. 
get some points off their bench. Well, the preseason All-American, Doug McDermott, with 31 points here tonight. He and the Creighton Blue Jays go to 17-1 for the first time in Creighton Blue Jay history as they defeat the Northern Iowa Panthers here tonight from CenturyLink Center. Final 79-68. And for Kevin Lehman, Chuck Jackson, and our entire Niles Media Group crew, I'm Scott Warman. Thanks so much for joining us. Again, the final 10th-ranked Jays over Northern Iowa, 79-68. Good night from Omaha. Welcome to the voice and video profile of Anthony James. Anthony James, ended a great career at Northern Iowa. He led the team in scoring as a senior and junior at respectively 13.2 and 12.5 points per game. As a senior, Anthony James was named on the Missouri Valley Conference second team. Later, he was also named on the National Association of Basketball Coaches, District 16, second team. In 2011, the talented guard was named MVP of the South Padre Invitational, and, at the end of his junior season, he made Missouri Valley Conference honorable mention. Please, have a look at Anthony James' stats. You will notice, he has averaged 12.7 points per game, in his last three seasons at Northern Iowa, shooting closely to a 40% from the three-point line. Not only, as a senior, he also had over two assists and four rebounds per game. This is Anthony James of the Champions Agency. Let Anthony help your team win as many games as possible.